Hey guys, here we are in the kitchen today working on a prime rib. We've got some friends coming over and I want to show you how easy it is to make a special meal. All right guys, here we are with our prime rib. Uh, now, when you go select your prime rib, there's a couple things that you can choose from. One is bone in, or sometimes you'll find it boneless already. Now, mine I happen to get boneless, and one thing that I wanted to point out is if you have a boneless prime rib, you will need to cook it in a rack, or something, one, to hold the juices, and two, something else to elevate the meat up to get a circulation of heat all the way around your prime rib. That's one of the things to focus on. Now, if you had a bone in, you could just rest that right on the bone, which will help elevate that meat up. So you may not need the rack. The other thing is you'll notice here, uh, I have actually already seasoned my meat. And the only things you really need for a prime rib is salt and pepper. So two times to one on the salt to pepper ratio on your meat. The other thing that you'll want to do is try to get that salt and pepper put on your meat and then let it rest in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Now, if you can't do a full 24 hours, at least three to four hours is traditionally better. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is what you're gonna do is you're gonna get that salt to penetrate into that meat a little bit better. The other thing that you're gonna get is you're gonna get that exterior surface to dry out a little bit more, getting that crust on the exterior of your meat to be better during that cooking process. Not only that, but it really acts as a dry brine process. So pretty good here. Now what we're gonna do with ours is a reverse sear. So we're gonna low and slow cook our meat at 225 up to about 120 degrees. Now that's a medium rare uh, temperature. I know it's not cooked uh, to everybody's liking, but that's a pretty good temperature for what we're shooting for. Then we're gonna let it rest from anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. And then we're going to put it back in the oven again at about 500 degrees. So uh, the thing that we do need here, again, a couple things, salt, pepper, make sure you get that uh, that taken care of the night before. And the other thing that you're gonna wanna cook with is a thermometer. Now, you can pick these up just about anywhere. Uh, I picked mine up uh, at a local uh, super center. Uh, the nice thing is you can actually cook your meat to the precise temperature, not really time. Um, I'm guessing this will take about 25 minutes uh, at 250 per pound. So we're looking at roughly over two hours just to get it to temperature. But I'm gonna set my timer here to let me know when it's just before 120 degrees. Now we're gonna get our uh, probe put in, we're gonna get this in the oven and get our cook on the way. All right, now we have our prime rib cooked. It's been in roughly about three hours, a little longer than I thought, but we definitely want to take our time and get it to temperature. What we're going to do now is we're literally going to let it rest. What's going to happen is those juices are going to go back out to the exterior and make sure none of that, uh, the meat on the outside is gray. It should bring all those juices out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little foil on. We're not going to do it tight we're just gonna let it kind of hold the heat in. We're gonna come back in about 45 minutes and we're going to uh, put our oven back up to about 500 degrees and do that reverse sear. We'll cut inside and see how it looks.